everybody, and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed. Most people refer to starting your own company as taking the leap, as if they're blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. As always, if you like what you're hearing on the show, please do us a favor and help share The Void with someone who might want might, might be wanting to start their own company. We saw an opportunity to help others understand that self-employment is well within your reach. And just as our businesses have grown organically and by word of mouth, we want this show to grow the same way. For that to happen, it takes two things. We have to keep giving you guys really good content, and you guys have to do us a favor and share our valuable message with others. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and with me as always is David Hilton. Mitch, what's up, buddy? It's an awesome week. It's been a nice week. You know what I don't like is this weather. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, cold, it's like hot, then cold, rainy. then hot, then cold. Man, I'm ready for like some heat, man. Yeah. You know what? I? It's the first week of May. You know what's ironic? Come on, man. Heat. We don't do a ton of sewer replacements, but literally every day we record a podcast, I'm in a shit-filled ditch. It doesn't make sense. Were you there today? Yes. <laughs> I yeah. actually uh, went on a plumbing call this morning, just happenstance. Yeah. I do heating and cooling for this guy. So he calls Harv and he's like, hey, you know, I got this uh, sump pump. I think it's flooding this basement. It's his mother-in-law's house. I go over there. This guy has put this sump pump in himself. Yeah. Put it in there with a Fernco comp- coupling and it had blown that thing off of there. Oh, yeah. And literally had been spraying water on the ceiling in every box. Like she had all these plastic totes. They yep. were all completely full of water. I don't know how long it had been doing it, for days. Yep. It was nasty. Got to invest in a torque <laughs> wrench to make sure those clamps are tight. First off, I never use rubber. I, it's all glue. Yeah. I don't care. They say, oh, you need, it's easy. You can get, no. Yeah. Glue, glue them up. Glue them go. up. It was all, dude, it was so gross. Yeah. That's we've, why we've, I'm not a plumber. We've <laughs> had a lot of rain this spring, and we've done a boatload of sump pumps. So Yeah, replacements or just putting them in? Yeah, yeah, replacements. Yeah. So. Not to get off topic there, but. No, that's good. Um, if you are new to the show, um, we have a couple of different styles of episodes, uh, so we'll crash through those now. We've got some core episodes, which are going to be your first nine episodes. Whatever platform you're listening on, scroll all the way back to your first nine episodes. Those are going to be your core episodes, and what those are are those are nine episodes that go over six foundational rules that you'll want to abide by in order to successfully start your company. Um, Uh, Those steps are personal finance preparation, business finance preparation, systems preparation, community involvement work. Uh, We talk about how to wake up, do work, and repeat, or as the young kids call it nowadays, hustle and grind. Um, And then the final (laughs) step is evaluate performance, make adjustments, and improve. That step you will do for eternity. It is constantly a matter of evaluating your performance identifying poor performance, making adjustments, and improving. And you're literally going to keep doing that over and over and over. After you get outside of those first nine episodes, we get into a couple of different other styles of shows. We have some guest episodes where we bring on guests who have either started their own company or have a vested interest in you starting your own company. Um, And they talk about some of their successes and failures and everything. Um, We have some just general business topic shows. Uh, where we'll talk about general business topics. That's what today's show is. We've got some Q&A shows where you can email in questions to askmitch at mitchsmedley.com, and we will uh, answer those questions for you. And and um, uh, a lot of times we'll reply in an email. If your questions are good enough, we'll make a show topic about them. Real quick, I'm going to spell that out because some people don't know how to spell my name. It's A-S-K-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H. S-M-E-D-L-E-Y dot com. So uh, if you have any questions for us at all, feel free to send us an email, and we will get did those just, answered for did you. Did you just spell ask? Is that the problem? Or is it your yeah. name that they're having the problem? Well, I'm just giving them out. I'm the giving last, them all the letters. It's usually the last name. I've known you forever, and I still sometimes will write E-A. Yeah. Some, I don't know why. I just Some people want to do Smeedly. Some people want to do <laughs> Smeedly, like S-C-H. So, yep. It didn't help me growing up. I had an actual so like anytime you hear me say my name, you'll hear a definite pause between Mitch 
Smedley, right? Oh, because of that? I had a, I had a small <laughs> speech impediment growing up, and I would my S's sound like S-C-H. So I, I was Mitch Smedley. <laughs> and it took me a couple of years of therapy to get over that. So now it's that like— That must have been before I met you. Yeah, yeah. This was like that. first through third grade. So, um, so those are our styles of show. Today's show is a business-related show. What are we talking about? We are going to talk about the simplicity— of high productivity. Um, what do you uh, mean by simplicity of high productivity? Most people overcomplicate what it takes to be highly productive. Um, I will have people, so I'll have listeners of the show message me, and I, I get back to them like right away, and I give them detailed, I'm not just passing them off, I give them detailed information and everything else. And, and I even tell them, like, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And some will say, like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I don't know how you keep up with your schedule. It's probably crazy. And, and it's, it's an adjustment period is all it is. Um, I am no busier than you are. No. And, and you're no busier than I am. And, and we are no busier than our listeners, right? No. Um, our listeners are no busier than the younger people in their trades, their respective trades or crafts or whatever. Like the first day, the guy the first day on the job. Being highly productive is just a matter of becoming aware of where you can improve in your efficiency and in, in doing that. So for a, a guy is first day on the job. He's not getting much done, but he's incredibly busy because he's trying to learn all of the processes of how to do the most basic of tasks, right? Yeah. Three, four years in, you know how to do this task pretty quick. You know how to do that task pretty quick. So you can do those tasks much faster than a new guy, right? <clears throat> you go another three or four years in, and you start getting into some management level or even business ownership, and now you realize that, you can get a lot more done if you have people to get that done for you and with you. And so with you would be, yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's for you. Sometimes it's with you. It just kind of yeah. depends. But um, um, you, you can, you can have people to do that. Right. So like a prime example, when we started our company, I was the only plumber running service calls and I mean, there's there's some outliers here and there. However, like our revenue could only ever be so much yeah. because there was only one guy running, right? And so I had to put a whole lot of thought and time and practice and, and, and uh, preparation into what it's going to take to hire somebody. And it's not just like, hire somebody and hopefully they can figure it out. It's like, no, I want the, I want to hire somebody and have them be as equally productive, if not more productive than I am, right? So we made one hire and I spent two weeks solid with them. They already had all the plumbing experience. I spent two weeks solid with them making sure they knew how to do the thing in our business. That's more about culture. Yeah. This is how we do it here. This is what we expect. Yeah. This is, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. And so, and, and then even after that two weeks, there was another kind of two week period where they're on their own, but they're still kind of leaning on me a lot for Calling questions lot, and everything yeah. else. Well, now we get a whole month in and now we're actually starting to see like double the revenue that we were before because now he can run calls and I can run calls. And then we get to a point where it's like, let's hire another one. Right. And so, and now we have, uh, four full-time plumbers. Yeah. Um, and, and so we're, we're, and that's the natural growth scale. That's not having an investor, an investor come in and say, Hey, we're going to start here. I'm going to hire, we're going to hire this many guys. We're going to do this. That's natural growth. It's, and that, it, that makes your base, uh, the, the starting out of your company stronger. Yeah. When you, when you have the time and the ability to do that. Yeah. Versus I'm just going to buy a company and do this or I'm going to have some investors and we're just going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you had um, and it's good you bring that up. It's a very healthy way to grow that produces a very good culture through the growth. Rapidly growing companies typically struggle in the culture department. Right. It's because they're so focused on getting people in and teaching them how to do the task 
they're not really <clears> teaching <throat> those people how to s- succeed really well in the business yeah. and with each other. Um, and so we've got a very, very strong culture, very strong culture. Can I go back just a little bit? You yeah. said at the very, very beginning of that, you said, you know, <clears throat> they message you and then you get right with them. Yeah. I want to talk about that. That is a conscious decision to get right with people. So if you're on your own and a lot of people struggle with this, mm-hmm. so you're busy and you think, you, you know, you get that message and you think, okay, I'll get with them after this call or I'll get with them this evening. Cause I know it's not important. Yeah. It's extremely important to do it right then yes. because what happens is you don't know how that day is going to go. You don't know if it's going to be extremely busy and you forget about that person. Well, like we've talked about it before, one person can turn into six people very easily. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you have to make the conscious decision of, okay, when I get texts or I get calls or I get, and I'm talking business related, not Mm -hmm. personal, stupid Facebook crap. I'm talking about, you know, real life stuff. You need to get with them as soon as possible. Yeah. It is more beneficial for you to spend five, say you're on a call, but you're not right in front of the customer. It's better for you to just take the two minutes, get back with them, and then get back to work Yeah, in the long run than it is to try to put that off till even – say it's even just right after that call. Right. You know, if you can do it – I mean, if it's possible that you can do it right then, you need to do it right then. Yeah. Because you're going to get just get in that trap of missing people, stuff goes wrong. Yeah. And, and listen, this is this is on customers too. Some people get real mad when you don't get back with them in 10 minutes. I don't agree with that, you know, because they don't know that you're in a sewer ditch playing in poop. Well, and but some people do. So if you can get right after it and we say you could cut that down by 50 percent. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. And um, in the information day and age, people have access to you 24 seven, 365. That does not mean you owe them access to you at those times. Right. So, um, no, but during there's, working hours. Well, and, and there's so there's some general etiquette there, right? If somebody texts you, that's not urgent, right? That is agreed. That is a passive communicate back to me when you have a minute, right? Yeah. If somebody calls you, that's fairly urgent, right? If somebody sends you an email, that's probably even a little less than text in my book. It, it is now. Maybe slightly more. Yeah. It just kind of depends. Ex- it used to be the text. Yeah. It was important. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. I mean, I open eight apps to get to, you know, that specific email. Right, right. Um, on I the get, all my notifications are turned off because I have 15 emails, you know, or, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. We talked about it on a show here recently where I had texted my accountant and and I did. I texted him on purpose. I didn't call him. Right. I texted him and, and the text literally said, I have some questions. No rush. Give me a call when you have time. Right. And it's, it's a very. PC way to do it, a very uh, proper etiquette way to do it of just letting them know, I need to hear from you, but it's on your terms. Like I'm in no rush. Yeah. Um, You know, I wouldn't, and I made a conscious decision to do that. I didn't call him and then like leave him a message and leave him a voicemail that he has to listen to. And then, you know, all of this crap. He could just look at his phone real quick, set his phone down and know when I got him in it, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the, it's kind of the interesting day and age. You'll call people and they don't answer, and I'll literally hang up and text them. Um, I don't even leave them the voicemail because I don't want to have to make them to go through all that stuff. I'll Unless just, it's important. Yeah, now, now, now if it's important, yeah. I'll leave them a voicemail and I'll probably text him as well. Yeah. But um, that just kind of— And, you know, that's kind of an age thing too. Yeah, it you is. You know, like the younger kids, they they only want to text. And, you know, we've talked about this on, on this show. Mm-hmm. It drives me insane. Like, I would rather people call me, but I understand, you know, when you text. And Mitch does it to me. He'll text me, say, if it's important, he'll say, hey, call me when you get a chance. Yeah. Or, you know, you know, he'll be texting me or whatever. I just don't – the problem with texting is, and I think it's made – that we're, I'm going to get a little off here. It's made society – it's a bit of an issue because you cannot um, take inflection yep. in someone's voice. You can't get their tone of what they're thinking. And what happens when you read that text is you – you apply your own tone to that text right you know you may think you you know someone may read that and they may take it the complete opposite of the way you meant it yeah and now you've made somebody mad and all you were doing was sending an innocent text yeah that's why i hate texting I, i think it's better for information but if it's actually a conversation that needs to be had call them 
Yeah. It, it, it makes, I think it makes it, you know, um, it lets people get away with having more anxiety. You know, when you're a kid, you have that anxiety of how do I communicate with someone? Mm-hmm. And if you can't text and you have to talk to them, it lets you break through those boundaries. Yeah. But now you can just text. Well, it doesn't allow you to grow as an individual. We, we work with that with our kids all the time about forcing them to work through difficult conversations. Um, and that's actually a show that we have coming up about how to handle difficult situations. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably bring the same thing back up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a very, very important way to do it and making sure that you're communicating on the right platform, whether it's text or email or whatever. So, um, the not to pull us off sh- topic. No, you're you're <laughs> totally fine. Totally fine. Uh, so a lot of people would look at somebody who is highly productive and they have a hard time connecting with where they are at currently to where that person is at that level. And keep in mind, age does not matter here. It doesn't matter if that person is older than you or younger than you. I know some people that are significantly younger than me that are substantially more productive than I am. Um, and so I, I'm envious of it a little bit, right? I wish I would have found that little bit of secret sauce earlier in my life, but it don't, don't let age play into that. Just, just look at like where a person is in their productivity and then realize you can totally get there and you can start getting there today. It has nothing to do with some people write it off and they'll say like, oh, I'd like to be that way one day. Well, yeah. I, last time I looked at a calendar, we got like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I've never seen a day of the week called one day or someday, right? Like those days are today. Is that a meme? No. Have I seen that somewhere? I don't know. I don't know if I have or not. But when when I – anytime I dream of doing anything – it's not like, oh, someday I'd like to do that. No, like I, I literally immediately gut check myself and say like, okay, is this legit or not? And if it is, how do I get there? What are we doing to get there? Right? You have to have a plan to get where you're going. Right. And that, that breaks down with everything. That yeah. breaks down with communication with your wife. That breaks down with communication with your kids. That breaks down with communication with employees at work. That breaks down to how do you, it's so simple. How do you mow your yard? Are you gonna do one an stripe out, at a time? Are you gonna do an outside path circle and then do it in lines? Well, right. guess what? It's it's just a, you a, break it's, it it's down. A sequence of operations. Yep. I got to have to start here. I have to go through these five steps to get there. Yeah. Being productive in a work environment is the exact same thing. It I'm gonna is. go to work. I'm gonna have an extra cup of coffee. I'm gonna go. You know what? Whatever <laughs> got, it is, gotta I, have the mojo. I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> you know, I've got to. I gotta have a lot of chemicals in my life to keep me going. The uh, you know, some legal. No, they're all legal. Come on. <laughs> but they, you know, you, you go to work, you have your coffee. There's, you know, if you're a successful individual, there's a checklist. It, say you work at a, in a at a desk. I don't work at a desk, right. but at, on your desk is is a checklist usually. Yeah. You know, I got to go through these emails first. And I have to check in with my supervisor about this. Yeah. I had these two employees were supposed to do this yesterday. I have to, you know, you just have that before anything happens. Yeah. It's the same thing. So. One of the interesting things about being highly productive, a lot of people over glamorize high productivity, right? It's actually really freaking boring and really humble. Um, take take like uh, airline pilots, for example, right? You go jump on a plane for Southwest or United or whatever. That pilot has tens of thousands of hours of successful flights under his belt. Why? Because he followed a very basic checklist every day that was able to give him go, no go answers on everything, right? Yeah. It is that simple to result in success, right? And so now, yeah, you look at it on the other end of things and you're going, oh my gosh, that pilot's got, you know, so many thousand flights with no issues and all this stuff. One day I'd like to be there. Well, guess what? One day ain't on the calendar and you can literally start doing that today put yourself in some very simple checklists in place and do them um you know start out with five it's not a big deal right right if you if it's over i I say that as if it's overwhelming for you if it's overwhelming for you pick five things right what what is what do they talk about um i did see this on facebook the other day 
uh, some general was uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier but make your bed yeah what do you do every day to be successful well i get up and i make my bed yeah that's step one yeah did you that, put that on there no i i've did shared that before was, it's been shared over and mm-hmm. over and literally i may we'll probably try to find a way to put a link to this or something on the show um i think he's a navy general he's a navy seal general is yeah, what it is something um it is one of yeah, the highly, best highly decorated yeah it's a great speech it is one of the best speeches ever yeah um and and literally mm-hmm. he starts the speech with the 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 key to I can't remember I'm gonna paraphrase this but basically the key to success is wake up every day and make your bed yeah like it's literally that simple and and he summarizes everything with like when you've had an absolutely horrible day and nothing went right at least you come home to a made bed yeah like it's kind of hard to to not get like I'm getting goosebumps just like yeah. thinking about that <laughs> that speech is it's, amazing it's very good you know it's I don't make my bed. Janine makes our bed. Well, yeah, I don't make mine either because I'm the first one out of it. Yeah. Like, I, that's a great way to piss your wife off is try to make the bed off, make the bed first with off, her in it. First off, so Janine and I, we have different schedules for different days. Yeah. Like, so some days she's gone before me, some days I'm gone. She will make her side of the bed when I'm in it, and I'm like, what? What are you doing? What the? F- so she'll make it, she'll pull it up, and then the dog will get up there and, and lay there, and yeah. I'm like, you know. Well, but even even when you can kiss even, that hour of sleep goodbye. Yeah, even when I get up, I don't make that bed. Nope. I, I like you know pull the, I just kind of throw the blanket on there and no. move on. But there are other things that I do every day. You this go. This is what I'm gonna do. You go into my it. bedroom and my shoes are in a very specific spot. Yeah. Like my my cell phones go in a very specific spot. The cords get put away in a very certain way. Like. Like I have a very that's structure. A little, that's a little crazy, but I get it. I mean, <laughs> I have a structure and an order to everything, right? And we've talked about like my morning routine before too. Um, we've talked about the importance of morning routine and not just morning routine, daily routine. Yeah, and a- about how important it is to get off on the right foot yeah. every day. And that's that's an intentional routine. It's not. It's not you're <laughs> doing it because that's the way you've always done it, right? So yeah. and and that's that's that is is it becomes natural over time, but yeah. it was intentional when you started it. Right. So like for me, up at four thirty every day. I'm at the gym by five. And we talk about this all the time. I say you're crazy. I know. I know. I get up at five fifteen, and I think that's. I'm like, man. Every at, literally, I've been doing it for almost twenty years. Right. I mean, there are obviously on and off periods where I where I haven't, but it's like still to this day, I'm like, man. Yeah. Like looking out the window, I will say like the uh, two days ago, I was up and leaving and got to see the sunrise. I like those days, yeah, you know. But only after I've been up for forty five minutes. Those first forty five minutes. Uh, do you remember Ocean's Eleven? Yeah. When uh, Brad Pitt and who's the other guy, Matt Damon, are talking, and he's like, "What are you suicidal?" And he's like, "Every morning, every morning, every morning for forty five <laughs> minutes." I'm literally thinking, "I'm like, I'm gonna kill yeah. myself." I can till that third do cup this. of coffee kicks in. Yeah, but you know what? It's an intentional decision. Yeah. Because I know that if I get up and I do these things, I will be successful in my yeah. day. Yeah. Even though it's a struggle, and that's I think that is a lot of what, especially this show is about, is you have to be intentional with those decisions to be successful right now now if you're waking up again morning like just because it's what you do every day doesn't necessarily mean it's an intentional morning routine right like if you're supposed to be on the job by six so you wake up at five when you you're pu- kind of pushing it right like let's say you have to leave by five thirty to make it up at six this is me at 23 years old yeah so like you wake up at five yeah and you kind of him haul around a little bit, and, then and, you're doing 95 and now you're to like, the shop. Tr- yeah, <laughs> now you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do for lunch, and well, I'll just buy lunch today again, right? Yeah, and then waste that money. Where's your car keys? Sense. Where's your shoes? Oh, let the dog out. Oh, I didn't get gas. Like that's the number one kiss of death, right? I'll oh, get man. I'll get gas in the morning. Oh, uh, that is <laughs> that's that the, is the kiss, the of absolute death. kiss of death. Yeah. So so now you're uh, like you said, you're doing ninety five yeah. to the shop, right? That's that may be a routine. That's not a intentionally productive routine, yeah. right? So intentionally productive would be like back that whole thing off a half hour and literally like in mentally you put a schedule to things. I'm up at five instead of five thirty. And 
I, I start the coffee at 510. Right. Or or I've got a coffee pot that's going to brew it at 5, and that way it's ready for me to make and drink at 510, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that gets to – I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. If, if that's a struggle for you, do a lot of those things the night before because you – that is also intentional. Yeah. You're doing that stuff in preparation for the next day. And listen, this sounds like stupid 10th grade crap, but people still struggle doing it. Dude, I'm it, I'm it, telling you, as basic as it is for a pilot to follow a freaking checklist that he's followed every day for the last 20 years. He still does it. It results in high productivity. It high results success in success. Yeah. yeah. So it's you got to you got to get over your your fear of like being a baby or being whatever and you just got to do it. Well, and people just don't want to be – people feel tied down by discipline, but it is actually freeing. Yes. You know what? And this gets into raising kids. You know, people think, oh, you know, when I was a kid, I had to do this, and I hated it, and this, and that, and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Look in the mirror. Maybe you're successful, and now you want to let your kids just kind of do whatever. Well, guess what that means? They may not be successful. Right. They don't have the discipline they need yeah. or the structure they need to grow up – your job as a parent is to put them in the best situation that you think is possible. Right. You know? Right. And it's the same thing as you get older. We all think, you know, everyone thinks in their 20s, man, when I get older, I'm going to do whatever I want. No, you're not. No. You're going to get older and you're going to do what you need to do to be successful. And if you don't do that, you're going to be a freaking failure. Right. And then you're going to be bitching that the government needs to pay you more money or taxes need to be less. Well, I shouldn't say that because I think taxes should be less. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to use all these excuses – when all it comes down to is you did not put yourself in the best situation to make the most out of your situation. Right. Personal accountability. Personal accountability and personal discipline. Yeah. It's just insane. So um, as we've talked about on the show before, a little over a year ago, I started working out every morning. I did not envision at all that it would turn into what it's turning into. Before I did it because I was out of shape and I was fat and I needed to like lose weight and everything else and I, I wanted to challenge myself. Old begging. It's evolved into like this is part of my recipe for success. Um, and I've said it before. I use my morning routine as a barometer for the day. I'm up for three hours before I ever talk to another human. And if I'm up for those three hours, you don't talk to anybody at the well, gym. I guess I talk to people at the gym. That's a little bit different. You We're mean, not humans at the gym. We're not awake. You're yet. animals. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you mean you don't talk to anyone about business or about regular business or family? Yeah. Or right? Life of what's going on. Right. And so I can use <clears throat> that three hour time to get a gut check on myself of where am I at for the day, and if I'm not in the greatest of moods or the greatest of positions or whatever. It gives me time to prepare for the day. That guy that's waking up at 5.30 and has to be on the job at 6. He's not productive till 9. He's not productive till 9, but also if he wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and he's in a foul mood, guess what? He's going to lip off to his boss and he might get fired, right? First off, everything he's saying, that's that was me. Right. All the time. I never I've got, been there too. I've never got fired. I got fired one time, but not because of stuff like that. Right. I'll, maybe I'll, someday I'll tell that story. <laughs> But I was that guy, right? You know, and but the only reasons I never got fired is because I was just a, re, partly by the grace of God. Other times, because I was just really great at my job, yeah. And so I could slide on stuff like that. And there are guys like that, yeah. But that doesn't even now when I look back at that, that is not an excuse. I should have been doing better. Yeah, I'm talking about a lot of times, like when we lived together. Yep. I should have been doing better. Yeah, you know, I mean. Who knows where I could have been if I would have realized those things at that early age. And that's a that's a you I problem. I, I wish I would have. It wasn't me a problem. Right, yeah, right. 100%. There's, there's nobody that could have convinced you to li – like, that's all self-accountability. Yeah. That's all you, right? Yeah. That's internal. 100%. There's nobody I, – I don't think I ever tried, but if I had tried, it would have been a royal failure because yeah. that's that's just something a person has to make that decision for themselves. It's uh, So that is just like an addict. Yeah. An addict is – you can you can tell an addict – or a drunk, or a smoker, or whoever, a hundred million times that you shouldn't be doing that. But until they decide for themselves, yeah, and decide personally inside, hey, I'm going to do this. Yeah, it, it's not going to happen. Right. I know guy. I know a guy. Um, 
that quit smoking literally cold turkey because he just decided he had been smoking literally for like 35 years and was like, I have to quit and I'm going to quit smoking cold turkey just right. like that because he had made the personal decision yep. to do it. Wow. You know, I, I mean, and that's just that you can break that down to everything. Yeah. That is in everything. That's your daily life. That's your spiritual life. That's everything. Yeah. Is it's, it's your personal decision to do those things. The, the other thing that I want to hit on too, now that we're talking about personal decisions and personal accountability, don't get yourself into the trap of allowing other people to dictate how you will perform. Um, there are people every day in life that will try to tell you how you will perform. And they don't necessarily tell you directly either. These are people like doctors, managers, attorneys, co-workers, spouses, all of these people, right? And they do it, sometimes it's like in your face, sometimes it's kind of passive aggressive. And sometimes they mean harm by it and sometimes they don't. But they will they will backhandedly tell you, like, like if I told you like, hey, I'm going to go on a diet and I'm going to get down to 8% body fat, right? You might joke around and say like, yeah, whatever, like that's going to be impossible. In a, in a way, you're telling me what might happen, right? You're telling me how I will perform. You've got to understand that if you make a commitment to do something, you have to own that. You have to be in charge of it. And you have to be ready for nobody to believe in you, right? Let's, let's talk about that for a second. So say I said that. Right. So what? Whether I meant that as a dig or literal, like Mitch and I are friends, so he would right. just you know how Dave's just you know busting with chops here. Right, right, right. We're, you know, which is fine. But d- how Mitch takes that? Say we weren't great friends. How he takes that? That's on him still. Is yeah. it? Is it bad faux pas on me? Of course it is. Not really. I but, mean, I mean, what? I, it, it's not I your mean, job to worry about me getting offended by what you say. No, but say say I say say I mean it as a dig, and we don't know each other that well. That's right. on me. I should first off, people shouldn't be that way. Right. But people are okay. But just because people say that stuff to you, do not let that affect the outcome of your life. Right. Okay. Right. I know that sounds like a whole bunch of life coach speak, but it's true. It is very very true. You're in control of your situation all the time, no matter what. And it's now listen, it's hard. For people to separate their brain and say, okay, no, I'm not going to let that bother me. Because right. things bother you. Okay, they do. We we let shit marinate in our heads way too long. Yes. But if you can recognize it right out of the gate and say, I'm responsible for myself. Yep. These are my actions. I'm going to do it. I don't care what anyone else says. And we talk about this on the show all the time. Mm-hmm. I told Grant that, your yeah. son, that one day. I told yeah. him, you know what the number one thing in life is? Don't let what anyone thinks bother you. Yep. That's the nice way I say yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. care what other people think. Be yourself. Yeah. Be true to yourself and just uh, you know, just live your own life without the influence of others. Right. As as best you can. Obviously when kids are a little different, but So so one of the guys I work out with and we may have him as a guest on the show sometime. Um he has a concrete lifting and leveling business. Does he work out with at Tyler's? Yep. Tyler doing good? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm doing real good. Good. Um, uh, so one of the guys that I work out with, um, his name's Jeremiah last year, his dad got COVID. Okay. His dad's like in his seventies. Um, his dad's always been fairly fit, but like for the last 10 or 15 years, he's had quite a bit of like health issues come in. So you get to be 70. Yeah. You you get some bypass stuff going on and, and some other, you know, things like that. Well, anyway, he got COVID real bad. Right. Doctors told him he will die. Doctors told him, like, after he didn't die, doctors told him that he will never have the life he used to. And then once he started making a little progress, doctors told him that his lung function will never be what it used to. And so he went and bought a couple of, like, cardio machines. Listen, this isn't about COVID, okay? No, so no, no. So before God, you all no. get crazy, all no. the crazy this COVID This has nothing people. to do with COVID. Yeah, just relax. Everybody this, relax. These are, these, are, these are people who have a career in, as a medical expert, and they are telling this man what he will do, right? 
he took the personal accountability and the personal responsibility to give him the proverbial fuck you, you or, aren't in control of my life. Or the best chance to say the odds were 80%, but he he gave himself the best chance to overcome those odds. Right, right. And that's what so we're talking about. He invested in some cardio equipment. He literally spends an hour and a half a day working on these cardio machines. And literally just last week, doctors are telling him they have never seen as much of a m- miraculous recovery from the lung condition that he was at to where he's at now. Yeah. Do you think that's anything by chance? No. Or do you think that's because somebody took ownership of their situation and said, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to change this, right? Yeah. And you know what? Hopefully those doctors say, okay, what did you do? And they write it down. Yeah. Which I doubt they will because they're a whole bunch of shitheads. No, of course. And, you know, and they should say, hey, okay, look, I did have this customer do this. Customer. It, I like how you said customer. It is a customer. Because that's what literally it is, doctors are the biggest salesman I, ever. I did that on purpose. I was yeah. hoping you wouldn't spot it. And no, just man. Let it go, but, uh, Nailed it. But, you know, I mean, that's – hopefully they will say that. And, you know, say it inspires one person that it saves their life. Maybe. But, but the key there is it has to be the customer slash patient. They have to be the ones to take control of it, right? Yeah. Now – he didn't just jump right out on these three pieces of cardio equipment a year ago, right? He started making slow and progressive steps. He gave himself a list of a couple of things to do every time, every day, to get a little better and a little better and a little better. And here, nine months later, he's buying these cardio equipment pieces and, and doing that. And now he literally has three objectives every day, and it's to spend 30 minutes on the row machine, 30 minutes on the treadmill, and 30 minutes on the bike. Yeah, And that's all he wants to do every day. And I guarantee you, next week or next month's goals have more minutes included in that or faster paces included in that. And it's because he's telling the doctors, you don't get to control how my life will work. You don't get to yeah. tell me what I will become, right? Yeah. Um, and that is an exact parable for life in general. Your boss doesn't get to tell you what you're going to do in life. Your spouse doesn't get to tell you what you're going to do in life. You tell you what you're going to do in life, and you get your boss or your spouse or your coworker on board with it. Yeah, I, that inspired me. I know this guy. His name, I'm, he listens to our podcast. I'm going to mm-hmm. say what his name is. His name is Ray, Raymond Parsons. Okay, He's a good friend of mine. He works with my wife. Every Monday— for the longest time, I thought it was really stupid until I I really got to – not stupid. I shouldn't say stupid. I just thought, uh, you know, this guy's out there. And, but then we started ev- – literally even before this show, I didn't realize how important some of this stuff – I was doing it but didn't realize the importance of it. Right. So on Facebook, he puts on – every Monday, he puts, thank God it's Monday. And then he lists, you know, a few things that he did – uh, on the weekend, and you know, it like so. I'll just read off. He wrote, you know, you make each day better. After yeah. he put, thank God it's Monday, and then you know he just says, you know, I had fun times at draft day for the Chiefs, and then he's you know s- loves spending time with um, I'm not going to say his name, but his new grandson. Yeah, you know, and just and then you know he says, you know, God bless each of you. I pray that each of you wake up with love. You know, he just starts his week with that. Every week he in, puts that on there, but an it's intentional just, recognition of what he's yeah, thankful for, right? And, yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I always thought it was kind of um, a little weird, but then when we started doing the show, I thought, man, you know what? He just intentionally says at the beginning of each Monday, and I mean, he posts this. He's like you; he posts this stuff at like four a.m. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I see it, you know, at, every Monday morning. But he just—it's just intentional. Hey, I'm going to do this. Yeah. This starts out my week. You know, I'm. I'm going to start it out good no matter what with this. Right. And and I know that his weeks are shitty. Yeah. He works at a hospital and he has an important job and you know he sees a lot of crap, yeah. but every Monday he starts that week out the way he should. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean being able to to recognize that is huge. Being able to recognize the things that you're thankful for are huge. I one of the things that I do in our company is I I have a conversation with every single employee that we're bringing on board. And I tell them flat out, I get that there's going to be some outliers, but for the most part, if you aren't equally as excited for Monday as you are for Friday, 
you need to let me know because you might not be in the right company. I want you equally as, as excited on Monday as you are on Friday. I'd lie, but, you know, that's just well, me. <laughs> we, I mean, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. and You guys do. You take them all. I mean, your, we, your guys we, seem pretty happy. Yeah. So, like, today's Tuesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Every Wednesday morning, take all my guys out to breakfast at one of those restaurants here in town. And I've known um, Mitch tw- more than 20 years. He's never invited me to breakfast on Wednesdays. Well, you got to be an employee of the company. <laughs> See? I'm still not getting <laughs> an invite for tomorrow. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, we do breakfast often. We go out to the bars and have fun often. We're not rowdy. We're not obnoxious. We're not. You guys just get together after work one day a week and have some beers. We, we, yeah, and, and the spouses come, and, like, like it's it's literally, like, let's just go enjoy each other's company. And if you can't enjoy each other's company in a private setting, it's going to be really hard to work together in a in a workplace setting. Yeah. And so, now, listen, and that's harder when you have 100 guys you know, to do those. You, you just do it in do, levels, yeah, right? They, when they do outings or one ma- – like if, if one manager has 20 guys and one has 20 – you know, those 20 guys. Yeah. You know, you try to get those 20 guys together to do a golf outing or you right. know, once a month or – um, go to the shooting range or, you know, top golf, whatever. Yep. Yeah. But it, you can do it. You can do it. You can totally do it. So one of the keys to high productivity is a book. We've referenced it a bunch on the show and I'll keep referencing it forever because it is awesome. It's called the E myth, E hyphen M Y T H E myth. Um, and if you want to look for it on Amazon, it's, uh, just look up the E myth revisited, because they've had a couple of renditions since then. They also make spin-off books of this. And, and they're not fake, they're not spam or anything else, but they make like the e-myth for hair stylists, the e-myth for automotive. Yeah. They, they, they make a bunch of different versions for a bunch of different <laughs> trades. But you can get the idea just by e- by reading the e-myth revisited. And one of the things that it talks about is picturing your business at its final uh its final classification or its final level or its final size right and so you may picture your business at its final size where you've got like seven locations and seven different location managers and 14 or 15 people at each location and all of that and that's perfectly fine right so now you work the problem backwards and you start putting things in place that get you to that level. Yeah. And and the E-Myth does a really good job about showing you how to put that framework in place Shows you how to, to get do there. that, right? Shows you how to get there. Yeah. And, and so that's the philosophy that I'm following in my business. I have a plan for my business that I want to, to come to fruition. And so literally every single day I've got tasks on my to-do lists that are putting me – a, a fraction of a step closer to that decision. Is that going to happen overnight? No. And it, should I get discouraged because it didn't happen next week? No. Right? Like multiple, like let's just take, for example, multiple locations. You will never be successful having multiple locations unless you can take your one location that you have now and be really, really efficient at it. Right? Yeah. So if your dream is to have multiple locations, your steps need to be around what can I do to make my one location run autonomously and really efficiently? And then once you have that process down, well, now you can lay that into another location. Um, maybe your step is, or maybe your big dream vision is to go from one guy to five guys. Perfectly fine. One location, just five guys. That's totally fine yeah, too. Yeah, you don't have to dream over the rainbow. No, you gosh, can, no. It, it, you, I know tons of guys that have three guys, four guys, and make a ton of money. And they love and they're it. extremely happy, and they're right. extremely successful. You know, we've talked about this before um, as far as um, what people think success is, what their vision of success is. You know, oh, man, I only made 300000 last year. I didn't make a million. What? You're you're in the top 5%. Right. You know, or, ten, or I think it was 10. Yeah. You're, you're there. 
you're yeah. successful, you're happy. So don't think, you know, because Mitch is saying, oh, I'm going to have this location, this location, this location. Don't think that your dream's not big. Right. And I, I, I'm not saying that's not for me. I'm just saying no, I, like, if your dream is multiple locations, yeah. focus on the one first, and then you can replicate that, right? Yeah. If your dream is to have multiple people working for you, well, focus on literally, like, like writing down a, a framework for how you do your job really, really well. So that way, when you add person number two, they have some kind of rule book to fall within, some kind of guidelines, so to speak, and not some corporate handbook type thing, yeah. but just <laughs> like really examine what it is you do that makes you successful so that you can now tell other people to do the same thing. Um, and then, like, uh, step six, evaluate performance, make adjustments, and improve, right? So you hire that first guy, and let's say 60 or 70% of everything you worked with him on works really well, but 30% he's struggling with. Well, that's a problem with your process, right? So, okay, that 30%, I didn't teach him very well how I do this. I didn't train him very well on how I do that. So the next guy I hire... I need to make sure that I also incorporate that. Yeah. And you slowly get better every yeah. time and every time. And that makes your employee that makes your your business better, that makes your procedure better, but that gives the employees you're bringing in a, a greater head start. Well, and especially if they're on a, a any kind of sales commission or any you're automatically putting them in a better situation yeah. also. Yeah. So you're it's almost like you're when you're humble and can say I screwed this up, I need to be better here. You're paying it forward for the next person. Yeah. Employees love black and white scenarios. They hate gray area scenarios where they have to kind of figure it out on their own, right? Yeah. So the more that you can kind of spell out how exactly how you'd like them to operate in all these different scenarios, the more successful they're going to be, the happier you're going to be with their performance because now they're doing exactly what you asked them to do. And, and that doesn't mean micromanage. It just means giving them some very clear boundaries, right? But also putting a very clear boundary on the area that's for them to figure out. Putting a very clear boundary on the area where they have room to roam and you're okay with them using their artistic creativity to do whatever they want to do with that area. Yeah. So, But the more you can box that out for them, the easier it is to bring on more people and have them do the same thing the same way as the other people in your organization. And that gets back to the topic of the show, you know, being highly productive. Yeah. It allows them to be highly productive because you've put a system in place. Yeah. And that gets to, um, you know, one of the notes I had was, you know, to be highly efficient, highly uh, productive, you have to be organized. Yep. You know what I mean? You. And I'm not just talking about business wise. I'm talking about per job wise. Yeah, you have to be able to go to a job site. Say you're uh, roughing in a new house on HVAC. The way I do it is, um, you know, I go into the house. Obviously, all the metals already been delivered. Whether I made the metal, whether I ordered it from somewhere, I have to verify that everything matches my job seat yep. sheet. Then I have to go upstairs and I have to mark out everything if it's not marked out. I have to verify I have the things to do that. Right. If I don't have everything to complete the job right then, I have to make a phone call. Yeah. I need X, Y, and Z. If I can't get them, I have to just, okay, I'm going to have to bypass that and not waste time on it. I have to move on to other aspects of the job. Right. You know, and then like say it's just a, a regular, you know, ranch house. You do the first four. You start up high. You stay organized and you move in a pattern where you're not jumping back and forth. And yeah. that gets back to organized. Yeah. You know, if you're organized, you don't have to jump back and forth. I don't have to I don't have to go get extra tools out of the truck. I've already laid all my tools out. I already know where everything's yep. gonna be at. That seems really common sense, but that's what it takes to be successful in that scenario. Yeah. And it's I'm sure there's a good example of uh, say you're gonna put a sump pump in. Yeah. And you go downstairs. When you go downstairs, to put the sump pump in, you need to have all your tools with you. You're gonna, yeah, never, you, never move in a direction empty-handed, right? Like, exactly. So you're always not always take something with you. Yeah, if you're gonna go downstairs, you might as well go with a couple of things in your hands that you're gonna need downstairs. And if you're gonna go back out to the truck, you might as well survey the area and make sure that 
if I'm going back out to the truck, I may as well grab everything that I'm done with and that can go back to the truck, right? Yeah. Makes your movements more efficient. And same it, thing happens on the bigger scale. Yeah. You yeah, know? it's the same exact thing. And you're, you know, you people, you know, you get a house done. So like when I was in my 20s, um, even in my 30s, I'm only 40, so not that <laughs> long ago, I could do an entire house, a small house, like a three-ton house by myself in one day. Mm -hmm. And there were guys that couldn't do it with two guys in two days. Right. Well, it was about the process that I had set up yeah. personally for me that allowed me to work efficiently to get, and they'd be like, oh, dude, I, how do you get it done? How do you do this? How do you do well, it starts with that first step. Yeah. You know, we've talked about it already and on this episode. It starts with the first step of you have to do these things first. I have to unload the truck. I have to go to do this. I have to. It's all about the steps. Right. And the efficient steps to get there. And that that's not just heating, cooling. That's not just plumbing. That's We've said it on this sh episode three times. That's not about business. It's about the preparation yep. and the organization to be productive. Yeah. That's, I mean, that 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 carries on all the way through the organization as you're as you're training new guys you're going to teach them some efficiency stuff as you're a manager you're going to teach your trainers some efficiency stuff as you're a company owner you're going to teach your man or manager some efficiency stuff um and being able to do that in literally every aspect in your life is a key to being highly productive and that gets back to you have to have the intent to do that. Yeah. You have to say, I'm going to, you know, we've talked about um, when you're working out, you have to have the intent. Same thing. I have to have the intent to do this with the guys. Yeah. To do this with the job. I'm going to do this. This is what's going to happen. And that's how we're going to be successful. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it it sounds so simple and so stupid, but it is. That is what it takes. And, and those guys that you mentioned, you know, you could rough in a house in one day. I could... You know, as a new guy, like if I were to try to go do it, me and another guy may take two or three days to do it, right? Well, the guys that have been in it for a while and are still needing a two-man crew to and a day or more to do what you're doing in one day by yourself, those guys spend more time worrying about how much you're getting done in a day than they are yeah. worrying about how they can improve their performance. You get far mm -hmm. enough down that road... And now all of a sudden, those guys start looking at you like, and I hate this word. They'll say, "Oh, you're gifted. Yeah. Oh, you're no. just born at a higher level, or or no. you're lucky, right? No, I'm just. And I'm it just has working hard. That's absolutely what, nothing yeah. to do with being gifted or working at a higher level or lucky. You're just literally spending more time focusing on what I can do to be more efficient. Yeah. I I remember. I was, this was back when I was doing new construction plumbing for homes, doing new home plumbing. And I, I started working for uh, Rex down the road. Oh, yeah. And Rex. Um, He's still in business? Yeah. He's an older guy now. Uh, that's why I asked. Lesser capacity, but yeah. yeah. So one of, I was first working for him, and it was my like first couple of weeks there. And there was a contractor there that was here to do some other things, right? And, and so I'm You're like... talking about at a new house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we were kind of working with them. I think it was an HVAC contractor, and we had like a conflict where plumbing and HVAC needed to be in the same area, so we had to talk about like how we're going to get it done. And so we needed something from the truck. Well, I run to the truck and go grab it, like physically run yeah, we've talked to the about truck, this. right, yeah. and go grab it and come back. And, and the guy's like, does your boss know you like run everywhere? And I'm like, well, yeah, I got a lot of shit to do, and if I can make that trip faster, it's I get more stuff done. He's like, man, you must love working, right? And that's just the 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 personality differences between a guy that's just going to work to work and a guy that's like trying to want to get better. A person that has intent yeah. to get better. Right. And I mean, I would, I'm killing this horse on this show today, just yeah. beating that horse to death. Well, that's what so it you is. You have to have intent. To be greater. And it's not fake bullshit intent either. It's not saying no. I want to get better without actually putting forth the work to do it. Yeah, and you didn't run to the truck and then come back and say, hey, guys, you see how fast I did that? No. No, you just did it because that's what you're doing to try to be better. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's we had a lot to get done that day, and if I can run to the truck right. and cut that trip in half you're the like, time, yeah, you're like, might hey, as well dude, do it. Okay, I'm here. We got let's go. Right, let's go. I got stuff to do today. And and on a new construction job site, if you're running to the truck 15 times or 20 times, you know that that comes down to multiple minutes a day where you have more work to do everything else. You know, and I I wasn't gonna bring this up till later, but you we talked about this the other night, and you said the ultimate excuse for all this stuff is um, all work, no play. You, yeah. you had brought that up, and, yeah. I, and I bring that up here because people use that in that scenario. Like, yes. that, say that guy said that. You can use that both ways. Well, you know what? If I work that hard and I get it done, well, now I have more play time. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that you know, I mean, you work can spin life it both balance ways. Yeah, work-life balance. Is, is yeah. the bull, most bullshit excuse ever for poor performance. People will... People will, they, they know they shouldn't be fucking off or they know they shouldn't be taking the three day weekend and going somewhere. They know that they shouldn't be spending the money that they're spending to go on a trip that they really can't afford. And they give themselves the freaking excuse of balance or yeah. whatever hot social word, you know, me time or whatever the words are that they want to use for for the excuse of I'm not actually working hard, I'm fucking off. And listen, I have two things to say about that. One, the harder you work at work, whether you work for somebody or not, means you're making more money, means you're getting the jobs done s- sooner, which means you have more time for your personal shit. Right. Okay? So if you're – say you're on a job where it's – Pay by, pay by the job you rough in. We're, we're with new construction. We'll say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll say, you know, I knock out two houses in four days instead of five. I got paid the same, right. but I get a third day. Right. Okay. That's how I pay my guys. I literally pay saying. my guys per the task. And so if they can take a five-hour task and get it done in three hours, guess what? Those two hours are for them. Yeah. If they can take a two-hour task and get it done in one hour, well, guess what? That extra hour is theirs to do whatever they want with. Yeah, and, right? and I'm not and I'm not against um you know on this show I think it sometimes sounds like you know we're all this oh macho we work and we don't play and we Oh god no. When I'm I play I way, play fucking hard. But I and I'm not against people that don't want to work hard and want to have a more laid back lifestyle, but just don't give me the bullshit of must be nice. Of of either must be nice or I don't work that hard because I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm this or, you know, yeah. I'm that. Just own it. Say, yeah. no, I'm comfortable being more laid back and not being successful. But then don't whine when you don't have freaking money to be a baller and yeah. go do great things. Yep. Okay? I yeah. mean, I'm not I'm not driving around a Ferrari, but I'm also not giving excuses like, oh, man, oh, I don't I don't work hard enough to have a Ferrari. I don't No, I'm. You're I'm also fine. not calling into your boss because your car broke down for the third time this week because you can't afford to fix it. No. Or if I couldn't afford to fix it, what would I do? What would I? Let's. Just, that's a weird example. Say, say I couldn't go to work this week because my truck broke down. Say, say Monday I called my boss, and my truck broke down. Would I call him and say, "Yeah, I'm not going to be in for the week"? No. I'd find a way. I'd either rent a freaking car, or I'd call Mitch and say, "Hey." Can could you give, you me, a give ride? me a ride or could I borrow something? Or you just call your boss and say, can you come pick me up? Yeah, like, exactly. I you don't use it as, a, as an trouble. excuse not to work. I need some help. Right. And bosses will pick you up. Yeah, they absolutely fucking lutely will. And I, but I, that's funny that you bring that up because, you know, where we used to work, that was a deal. You yeah. Know, there were a lot of guys that didn't weren't successful, the young guys, you know, and they'd have a car in it. But the guys that, that needed to get to work to pay for that car that wanted that had drive, they got to work anyway. Yeah. Like they'd be 10 minutes late and they'd walk right up. I'll just, they walk right up to Bob and be like, Hey man, my car broke down. And Bob be like, yeah, I, you know, I see you. Yeah. You know, I see you driving off and you need to ride. But you're and, still here. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> and, and everyone was like, Oh man, dude, that sucks. You need a ride. Right. You know what so, I mean? So I got a plan on taking you home. Got it. Yeah. Like Mitch, sweet. Mitch drove me to work and brought me home for like, yeah, I remember, remember that. Camaro yeah. Your, your Camaro broke down. Yep. Yep. He did, you know what though, it, it, in Mitch's, in my own, not in Mitch's defense, uh, good character on Mitch is like if I wasn't up and ready to go, 
Dave didn't get a ride to work. Nope. I left. Because Mitch was going to be there on time. Yeah. And you know what? He should have been. And that's back when you were struggling in your early, yeah. late teens, early 20s. And uh, 20. So, I mean, same with me. 20, right? 21. Yeah. 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 But that, but that's good on Mitch. Right. Because he shouldn't have been waiting for me. He should have right. been at work on time. Right. You know, right. that's just, that's how it should be. That's just being how it was. Yeah. Right. So there, there's a lot of people tangent. that will use a small inconvenience as an excuse to throw away productivity for the entire day. Yeah. And, and you can't do that. Like I have a saying, I tell my guys all the time because they do work on a task based schedule. So a ta- like they'll, they'll sell a job that calls for four task hours and, and they, so basically they have four hours to get it done. Right. And if it takes longer than that, well, they're still only getting paid for four hours. If it takes less than that, they're still getting paid for four hours. Right. So I tell them all the time that occasionally we have to work a little harder for our money. It's just the way that life works. And that's the law of averages that we've talked about before. Yeah, exactly. There's over a year span, it's going to be pretty close to 50-50 that some took longer and some took less. Yeah, and if you are intentional with your productivity, you're going to be beating that average by a lot. Yeah, you could be. You could be. But, you know, don't – this gets to planning too. You know, don't don't automatically plan for the year that I'm going to be – above this right plan for this and then if you are above it because you're working hard right that's that bonus yep you know that's yep. that bonus we talk about um guys i think that's probably about wrapping up our show uh, we're trying to keep these to an hour and this one timed out about perfectly there so um close. if you uh if this show brought you value if this show made you think about something in a little bit different aspect if this show uh, if you think that if you think you have a friend that would love to hear this show, please do us a favor and send this show to somebody who might need it. Share it with them. Um, also, if you are on any social media groups, Facebook groups, or anything, and you hear guys talking about st- wanting to start their own company and that they might need some of this stuff, feel free to drop a link to our show. Um, I've even seen guys ask on their various Facebook groups where they're saying, hey, what podcast do you listen to? I'm looking for some new ones. Do us a favor and drop a link to the show. Um, Literally, it is our mission of the show to help as many people as possible cross the void from employee to self-employed. We don't make a dime for this show. We don't run ads on the show yet no i could be I, it might be nice first but, off it costs me money because i could be working right right now. you could be working i could be working yeah. you know i had somebody i it had is somebody kind of fun i'm not gonna lie I yeah i had somebody I like trying to show. throw me shade the other day talking about how um i should just focus throw on pl- me shade yeah talking about how i should just focus on like a plumbing company instead of like trying to do this whole podcast thing and i'm like hey what i do with my time is my own choice just and and i feel it's my life's mission to uh, improve the lives of those around me. And so, uh, fuck you. And that gives, you know, and that's, that's the giving back (laughs) to the community that we talk about. Yeah. You know, you talk about it's equally as important to give back to your community. This show is a great way to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is us giving back to the community in a way to help empower people. Not just our community here. You know, we have listeners that are nationally all over the country. Yeah. I mean, we're giving back to our country. Yeah. We have a we have a surprising number of Canadian listeners, if you would believe that. Hey. It's kind of interesting. Hey, I just I mean some syrup, some bacon. You know Let's do funny? some hockey. My cousin, uh, she moved. Her husband was from Canada, and uh, they got married. They, man, they got like seven or eight kids. I don't remember, but they, she lives up there now. Yeah, I think they j- actually just moved back. But yeah, they lived up there for a long time. It's Fun too stuff. cold. I like Canada. It's too cold though. Dude, I love the Midwest. I love Kansas City. We get all four seasons, and just yeah. about the time you're tired of one, here comes another. It's like awesome. You Sometimes like, you get all four seasons mean, in a say, week. You mean from Monday to Thursday? Like, yeah. Oh man, I'm tired of it being hot. Oh shit, it's 35 today. Yeah. I mean, I, it's that's, crazy. That's that's just the way the the cookie crumbles here. So, <laughs> um, guys, that's about it for this week. So, um, uh, uh, again, do us a favor, help share the show. And uh, we will catch up with you next time. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.